Sometimes it seems easy to come up with a cartoon show for kids. Just take a cool concept like cowboys or ninjas or robots and just build a show around it. And usually they turn out to be a pretty good success. But there's one thing that they just can't seem to get right. Dinosaurs. I don't think there was ever a kid that didn't love dinosaurs at some point. I mean, how could you not love them? They were giant monsters that ruled the Earth millions of years ago, and they had cool names like Tyrannosaurus Rex or Velociraptor. So naturally they try to market this idea to kids, but unfortunately they ended up with... let's say subpar results. A couple of the attempts they made included Dino Riders, that show with the guys that mount dinosaurs and give them weapons. But would you believe that this show was boring? Yeah, they somehow managed to turn this boring. There's Denver the Last Dinosaur, which unfortunately hasn't aged well. A show called Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, which I haven't seen, but judging by the intro, I think I have to. Then the 90s brought us Extreme Dinosaurs, that looks cool, but I remember this also being pretty dull. And would you believe there's another dinosaur show that came out a couple of years ago called Kung Fu Dino Posse? And as soon as I get a hold of enough footage, I really need to talk about that one. But today we're going to look at Dino Saucers, a show that didn't really have a lot of success on its initial run, but has apparently gained a bit of a cult following over the years. Let's take a look. First off, I have to apologize for the low quality video clips. Unfortunately, this was the best I could do. The series was never released on DVD, so good quality footage is hard to find. There were some VHS tapes available, but they're rare and impossible to get a hold of. Especially when people have the balls to charge a thousand bucks for a used videotape! Are you out of your mind? I don't even think this show's budget was a thousand dollars! Anyway, the show doesn't appear to have an origin episode, but the intro fills us in on the plot. The Dino Saucers are a race of aliens who came to Earth, for some reason, to fight off their enemies, the Tyrannos, whose motives are pretty vague. They do so with the help of four teenagers, who just happened to be there when they arrived. How convenient. You know, this seems like another show I might have seen who is also about two warring alien races that came to Earth. Just saying. So let's meet our cast. The leader of the Dino Saucers is Allo, the Allosaurus. There's Dimetro, the Dimetrodon, Bronto Thunder, the Brontosaurus, Stego, the Stegosaurus. You starting to see a pattern here? Tricero, the Triceratops, Bonehead, the Pachycephalosaurus, um, this thing, Icky, the Ichthyosaurus, and the token female of the group, Terex, the Archaeopteryx. Okay, well, I guess I'll give the show credit for picking some less obvious prehistoric creatures. Now for the Deceptic, uh, I mean, Tyrannos. Their leader is Genghis Rex, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, Ankleo, the Ankleosaurus, Brachio, the Brachiosaurus, Styraco, the Styracosaurus, Plesio, the Plesiosaurus, the terribly named Terrible Dactyl, and Quackpot, the Hadrosaurus. He's my favorite character because he's got the best voice ever. <laughs> Let's just make a lot of noise instead. You'll never catch me, Batman! But fear not, for the Dino Saucers have help in their battle against these clearly threatening villains in the form of four of the blandest cartoon teenagers the biggest hackneyed writers of the 80s could come up with. Ryan the blonde one, Sarah the girl, Paul the smart one, and David the asshole. And that's about all the personality they get. They have these planeteer rings that they use as communicators and somehow give them powers which let them move around like they're in Mirror's Edge. So what's this show all about? Well, apparently it's about wasting my time. On the outside, it looks like any other 80s cartoon with a strange premise, but just like all the other dinosaur shows, it just doesn't deliver. Most of the problem is the fact that we don't know what's at stake here. 
Okay, we got these two groups that are at war with each other, sure, but why? What exactly do the Tyrannos want? With most other villains, they at least established some kind of goal. The Decepticons wanted Energon. Cobra wanted world domination. Hell, even Skeletor had a justified motivation. With the Tyrannos, I have no idea. I mean, I guess they want to take over the world, but why? What exactly do we have that they want? Also, they don't really do much other than be a minor inconvenience to the Dinosaucers. Not much action in this show either. Most of the conflicts I've seen usually end in wacky hijinks. This is a show about dinosaurs from outer space. Doesn't anybody have a ray gun or a missile launcher? Something? Or do they just happen to be weak against slapstick comedy? God help us all if they start throwing pies. And the puns. Ugh. Usually I don't mind puns, but these are just bad. Ryan said we're supposed to wear new jerseys for the game. Don't worry, I'll take care of the new jerseys. I found a picture in the book. I was so happy to be back on the set of Dynasty. All right, men, the first play will be the king and I. No more puns! Ugh. Now to be fair, there were a few genuinely funny lines. Where did you learn such earthly boxing skills, Rex? By watching video cassettes of some mammal called Rocky. <laughs> Good thing he didn't learn to fight from Punch-Out or we might be in trouble. Then there was this from the episode where Bronto Thunder thought he was a superhero. In brightest sun, in blackest soot, no evil shall escape my foot. Let those who rob or steal or loot beware my power. Thunder lizards boot! <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was kind of cool. But everybody knows Daffy Duck has the best lantern oath. In blackest day or brightest night, this watermelon, cantaloupe, yada yada, a superstitious and cowardly lot, with liberty and justice for all. Another thing about this show that irritates me is when it had so many opportunities to have a good episode, but they completely screw it up. There's one episode where the Dinosaucers and the Tyrannos are about to go to war over a crater that had some fuel source or something, I don't know. But instead of engaging in battle, they play football. And they somehow manage to make a bunch of dinosaurs playing football kind of underwhelming. Especially when both sides don't even play right. Then there was another episode where Terex comes down with what could be a fatal illness. Now a situation where a main character's life is on the line could turn out a really good episode. But for most of the episode she's being stalked by some creepy bird watcher guy who gets into more shenanigans. Wait till the world gets a look at you. I'll be rich. I'll be famous. <laughs> And that's the problem. All this goofiness is too distracting from the primary conflict. I mean, sure, she was okay in the end, but any tension that might have been built was completely taken away. Now, there was one episode that I thought was okay. Some scientists dig up some Pteranodon eggs, and the Tyrannos want them because... <coughs> However, Terrible Dactyl steals them and wants to make sure they get protected and raised right. And in the end, Genghis Rex actually understood. Ignoring the scientific implausibility of ancient dino eggs being able to hatch, I kind of liked this one. It showed, dare I say, complexity among these silly characters. They tried doing some more, let's say, mature things with this show. There was an episode where they established there was an infatuation between Terex and Icky. Terex, have you ever been in love? Well, love is different among my kind, but I do hold a special place in my heart for someone. Oh, tell me! All right, but you mustn't tell anyone. Secret Scout's honor! Okay, it's Icky. Icky? Well, that's great! Why don't you tell him? Unfortunately, Icky's far too busy to be bothered with such nonsense. And besides, it would never work. Well, 
Why not? Because I'm an airborne dinosaur and Icky is a waterborne one. We're just too different for it to ever last. Really? A love story with racial undertones? They're really gonna go there? Actually, they don't seem to explore this much beyond this episode. Although, there are a bunch of episodes where you don't see the two of them. There are even episodes where the entire team is out on a mission, but they're conveniently absent. Was there some interspecies loving going on back at headquarters? On second thought, I think it's best we don't know. Surprisingly though, that was the most normal love story this show tried. Oh yes, there were more. Like Plesio having a fling with Nessie. Yeah, the Loch Ness Monster! Loch Ness is beautiful, Nessie. Almost as beautiful as you. Oh, Plesio, you think charming. Ugh, moving away from the inappropriate romances, there was an episode where some space pirates show up on Earth and apparently are so dangerous that it forces the two sides to work together. Wow. That's pretty heavy. What do these monsters look like? Aloe, what can be so bad that it makes Rex agree to fight something with you? That. that really this is just a bunch of furries running amok i think the local police can handle this can you guess how they defeat them seriously guess take a wild fucking guess how you think they're gonna take down a giant space cat has been trying for years to slow those creatures down. What did you do? Here, a gift from planet Earth to the planet Reptilon. Hmm, catnip, 20 pounds. Obviously, lots and lots of catnip. Fucking brilliant. Okay, now I need to talk about the dumbest episode I saw. The one where the Tyrannos steal a truck full of hamburgers because they thought they're fuel cells and want to use them to power their earthquake machine. Am I crazy or did they plan to start earthquakes with frozen hamburgers? I shit you not. That is the plot of an episode. Take one more step and I'll destroy us all. You fool! You'll be vaporized! These things can't hurt me. I eat them for breakfast. Well, uh, lunch. Anyway, here goes. He's invulnerable. Run! Ah! He got me. This show and these fucking characters are so stupid and ugh. But you know what? That's not the biggest moment of what the fuckery I saw in this show. In this episode, Icky gets attacked by a shark. Okay, first of all, I know sharks are dangerous, but for the love of God, you're a dinosaur. I think you can take him. 
But that's not what I'm talking about. He gets saved by a dolphin. Then this happens. You saved my life. Don't mention it. You okay? I'm fine, thank you. What happened to your friend? Who, please, yo? I guess he got away. Well, I gotta go. Gonna play tag with a trawler. See ya. What the fuck was that? A, a talking dolphin? A, 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 can Icky talk to fish like Aquaman? They never established that he could. True story. When I first saw that scene, it was so shocking to me that I nearly fell out of my chair. Yeah, this show nearly caused me bodily harm. I mean, it just comes out of nowhere, and it never comes up again in this episode. But in a later episode, they're in a swamp where they meet more talking animals, and they actually try to explain it by saying that toxic waste is causing the animals to change. Look! What's with the weird colored water? Ah, some more of that radioactive stuff I told you about. It's harmless to humans, but it sure did react weird with these swamp critters. Where the hell did this subplot come from? I could barely handle the talking alien dinosaurs. Now toxic waste is causing alligators to stand upright and pull mean-spirited pranks, while turtles wear neckties and gamble and hurl pieces of their shells at their enemies, and... and... Ah! Ah! Oh, God, that's it. I can't take any more of this. Oh, this is one of the biggest train wrecks of a TV show I have ever seen. It's just so stupid and off the wall and completely crazy. Oh. But the weird part is, I don't hate it. It might be because I didn't expect much from a show called Dino Saucers. Maybe it gave me enough unintentional laughs. Maybe it melted my brain. But for all its faults, I find it still somehow watchable. Though I think the biggest problem with the show was that the whole time I was getting this very apathetic vibe from it. Like nobody involved with this really cared. Like the actors, the writers, the animators, like they said, eh, dinosaur show, whatever. I know the show is a weird premise, but you gotta give it your all and act like you give a damn. So what it boils down to is that we had a show about some badass looking alien dinosaurs, and they did nothing with it. Though I can see why some people might enjoy the show, I can also see why it failed. Hell, it didn't even have a line of toys. Although prototypes exist and are pretty pricey. Heck, there was an episode where they get shrunk and they were playing with the Dino Saucer's vehicles like they were toys. How bad is that when a cartoon from the 80s didn't have a toy line? But, like I said before, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, and hey, I'm sure there are far worse things out there. Well, time to come up with my next review. Let's see, what should I do next? Jeez, this is always the hardest part, you know, coming up with my next video. Jeez, it's not like the answer just comes to me out of nowhere. Oh, someone's at the door.
Oh. <laughs> hey, Harley. Oh, you don't want to be in my video? You want to be in my video? Hmm? <laughs> He's shy. <laughs>